Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing one of my more in-depth reviews on a Linux distribution. This is where I take a Linux distribution and then use it as my primary driver for a couple of weeks and then sort of let you guys know how I get on with it. Today we're going to be taking a look at Antergos, available from antergos.com and I've got quite a long list of notes. Now, this is a rolling release. It is based on Arch and it was by far the most popular and widely requested distribution that I take a look at. So I've been using it now for a couple of weeks and generally I'm really enjoying it actually. Uh, it's a great distribution if you want to get sort of bleeding edge software but you're not too scared to roll up your sleeves and fix a problem once in a while. Although that being said it's still less buggy than I thought it would be. I guess when it comes to rolling distributions I do have a bias against them but I suppose now that I'm exposing myself to more and more rolling release based distributions I'm becoming more confident in dealing with them and I'm sort of seeing that they're more stable than I sort of previously thought I guess is the way that I talk about it. So this is uh, a lot closer to its arch roots than the last distribution I talked about Manjaro um, and a lot of people have referred to Antergos more as an arch installer rather than an actual separate distribution in and of itself and I can see why they think that because it is very closely linked to arch you can see that it's more like it gives arch Linux a graphical user interface that's very user friendly really pretty much. It also lets you have access to the Arch user repositories, which allows you to get just about any kind of um, software package that has been compiled for any Linux distribution to run on your uh, desktop, which is fantastic. So there are a lot of good things going for it, um, and I've got a lot of notes I'm going to talk about. So the first on my uh, list of notes is the website, actually. This is a, um, a factor in the overall distribution that a lot of distributions miss, because I guess it's not the core essence of what it is that they're working on and the core essence of the project itself. But if you want to, of course, bring new people in to try out a distribution, uh, explaining um, what makes your distribution unique and, you know, sort of uh, taking into account the user base and facilitating that in how you present and um, sort of write copy for your website is a big deal. And, and Antergos have done a very, very, very good job at that. So um, yes, the first thing that I was taken back by is the fantastic uh, website that Antergos have got. They explain the things that new uh, users, particularly new Linux users as well, even though I wouldn't brand this as a necessarily a newbie-friendly distribution. Maybe if you were sort of quite new to Linux but were very keen to sort of roll up your sleeves, I might recommend something like Antergos. But... Um, uh, but it's a very newbie-friendly website, and it does make you feel more confident in trying out the distribution. It makes it feel like it's very actively maintained, that there's a very strong and vibrant community. The, all of the instructions are very easy to follow, um, and considering I was trying out a new distribution from a family that I'm not particularly, or a family of distributions that I'm not particularly familiar with, that was actually very, very helpful, and um, it sort of pointed me in a lot of directions on where to look for help when problems did arise. Uh, th uh, another thing that I didn't see or you, that you don't see in many distributions is the ability to in choose software that you're going to install from the distribution installer. So when you're installing the operating system, it gives you a few tick boxes so that you can install some software alongside it as well. This is fantastic for a whole number of reasons. So one thing about it is that you will download a lot of updates and those updates will be large in size. So that means that if you don't have a particularly fast internet connection, you could very well be waiting on updates for a long time because you are switching out programs for newer versions as those newer versions become available. It does give you a fantastically bleeding edge system, but again, it is a lot to download load. So um, being able to install software and being able to choose what software runs on your machine from the install process actually minimizes the amount of updates that you need because it means that you're not updating software and packages that you don't use. And when it comes to rolling releases, that's something that, that you should bear in mind. If you have just like a scheduled regular Ubuntu release, you can pull down and download a piece of software, use it, run it. If it's not for you, just ignore it. But with a rolling distribution like uh, Antergos, you might want to consider uninstalling it just so that it's less stuff to update later on down the line and potentially less things to go wrong or less bandwidth to use. So the ability to choose from things like LibreOffice and the Steam, uh, you can actually yeah, install Steam from the installer. Um, that's a very, very good idea. And that's something that I wish pretty much all distributions would, would try, actually. Um, because it's, again, it's just a matter of customization and a really user-friendly way of doing it. Now, that being said, this is where I also hit my first bug, uh, which was that not all of the software selection that I chose at, um, at install actually made its way onto the final distribution. 
I selected to install LibreOffice, and that was installed, but I also selected to install Steam and the sort of the Steam and the games tools, and that w they weren't installed. They were easy enough to install post, um, you know, once the operating system was up and running, but um, I just feel that maybe it was a bug that, I don't know, will uh, presumably be phased out in time. Um, but that being said, again, it's not a showstopper, it's just something that happened. Um, the package manager, again, I really felt at home and at ease in using that package manager, even from the very first time. That being said, that's partly because I know the package names of the software that I'm looking for and, and stuff that I'm, and, and I already have an idea about what software that I use for my day-to-day -day use in Linux. If I was coming across from Windows, working out what packages meant, what package names, where it's not immediately obvious, or that there's, it's not super newbie friendly. It's not like an app store. It is very much a package installer. So um, you do need to know that, say, open broadcast software is going to be known as OBS Studio in, um, in, in the package report. Repositories. It's not a major thing, but uh, and, and for someone that's used, to, who knows how their system works, it's in fact arguably a positive. But it's certainly not something that's newbie friendly, so it kind of goes kind of against the grain there. But um, but again, it's a very good package manager, very comfortable. You know, I felt very comfortable using it. I knew exactly where I was. Even installing stuff from the Arch user repositories, which are less stable and less supported, but they do have software that isn't included in the main distribution, so it's. You know, it's 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 um, it's good actually. I, I generally give it a very positive um, uh, reception. Uh, in regards to NVIDIA drivers, because of course I run a NVIDIA uh, nine, a GeForce 970, which is a very, very good card, um, but because it is quite new, or at least it was quite new until recently, you know, until lately, um, it, uh, it had a sort of spotty um, support across Linux distributions. Uh, Ubuntu was the best for it, and Ubuntu-based distributions were the best for it. Um, but then again, now that the uh, NVIDIA drivers has sort of uh, diffused into the wider Linux atmosphere, um, or ecosystem rather, I guess, um, it would... Um, it, it's, it's less of a problem now. I did have to download and install my NVIDIA drivers deliberately and separately, uh, which again is something that I required knowledge of my card and knowledge of my computer that maybe a newbie might not necessarily have. But I had no problems installing it and I had no problems getting it up and running. So again, it's a minor additional step, but I gotta say, if a, a Linux distribution does take that step and install NVIDIA drivers um sort of, you know, on install, off the bat, that's a big thumbs up. So it, Antergos didn't necessarily get that. Manjaro did, but um, but there you go. Again, minor point. Another thing I really liked about the installer is that you get to choose your desktops from installer. You download one installer, and then during that installer, it says, do you want to use GNOME? Do you want to use KDE? Do you want to use XFCE, LXDE? All that kind of stuff. Uh, Mate, I think, was in there. It gave you a list of all the major op um, desktop environments that you could actually just and you could pick one to install and use. I wouldn't recommend having more than one desktop environment again on a rolling distribution unless you have a mega fast internet connection. But again, being able to choose your um, desktop environment on install so that you don't have various different ISOs that you have to work out which is which and all that kind of stuff. Again, something very easy for someone established in Linux, but very confusing or potentially very confusing for someone new to the platform as a whole. But yeah, a fantastic idea. I wish more distributions would be, uh, you know, would do that. And I know that it's an extra step in downloading. It's, you know, if you want a, an out the way desktop environment, that's a little more downloading that you have to do. But it is for user friendliness. And I think that that's, you know, worthwhile. Uh, it also didn't detect my United Kingdom keyboard, but that was just setting a few settings in GNOME. Um, the uh, there was an upgrade actually there was an upgrade for the GNOME desktop and that broke some of the third-party add-ons that were installed. Um, so that was a again that was a problem that I had. That being said though, uh, the GNOME desktop, which is the desktop that I chose for Antergos, was beautifully crafted. Uh, it used the Numix theme, which is a nice step away from the traditional GNOME themes, and they made it look fantastically beautiful and polished, and they made it look like attention to detail was given. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate among distribution, particularly community-centric distributions, which kind of have this um, stereotype of, of being um, amateurish and being um, a sort of a hobbyist distribution. So it's nice to see community-based distributions 
put on a bit of polish and make themselves look really professional, really polished, just like the website with Antergos, just like uh, the desktop environment with Antergos. So they've, you know, they've done a great job there at actually just sort of marketing their distribution to their actual user base and just making it so that it looks like a professional, well put together distribution. And it it is, and you know, things like this show it. Um, so there was only one big problem, which I'm sure that many Antergos users are going to know that I'm going to uh, bring up at some point. Um, and there was a pretty big break with the Light DM, the desktop manager, um, in the sense that there was this bug that made, sort of rendered it unusable, actually. Uh, so it came as a result of a, a GNOME upgrade, but it was it broke compatibility with Light DM, as I understand it. So what happened is that you would boot up your computer and then you click somewhere on the screen and it would just go blank white. Uh, you could still log in if you could sort of remember the procedure without your, your screen, uh, and then it would log in and everything would be fine. It's just the login screen um, effectively broke. Now that was easy enough to fix and they did put out um, update advisories and they did try and um, you know, sort of dissipate as much information about this problem as possible. And the way that they handled it was actually really, really good. It made me, it gave me a bit of confidence in the Antergos community as well, uh, that they were serious about getting problems fixed um, and they, they didn't leave their user base on their own. That being, and, and it was easy enough to switch out Light DM, the desktop uh, manager, with uh, the GNOME DM, GNOME DM. Um, and then all was fine. It was an easy problem to fix. There was plenty of documentation about it uh, very shortly after the issue occurred. So um, I got to say the Antigos community um, really sort of was on top of it actually as well, on top of a problem that does happen from time to time with rolling distributions. Usually a good way to solve a lot of problems with rolling distributions is if it's a, a minor package or a minor application that breaks in an update process, maybe it's a dependencies issue, maybe it's just um the the software itself um you know had that bug in it and it just came through in the system um it's always worth just switching that piece of software out for another one and that's you know usually the problem solved if it's a big um application something like steam or maybe like vlc libreoffice firefox chromium then it's a bigger issue because that's something that you're a little bit closer to as a piece of software but for the majority of pe um pieces of software like for example desktop managers um you're fine, you know, you can just switch them out. Um, so on the wider Antergos community, and I do think that the quality um, and the type of people in uh, a community surrounding a Linux distribution is important, I found them to be absolutely fantastic, very patient with me when working through some of the setting up bugs, and I say bugs, you know, some of the setting up problems as well, and just not knowing the nuances of the system. They were very, very helpful, they were patient, um, and... Uh, they sort of made you feel like there was someone there helping you with a problem, uh, even if that problem was something that you need to work on with other people that would where you would be sort of educated in a procedure and how to fix it, rather than just say, just stick this in the command line. So uh, an absolutely fantastic community, very, very helpful, very, very patient. Um, and the number of bugs that I actually did face, because I know I've been talking a lot about bugs and a lot about instability issues in this uh, video. In all fairness, once the system was up and running, and there was a lot of tweaking involved in getting the system up and running, but once it was up and running, it was fine for the most part. It was generally good as a daily driver, fantastic as a daily driver, really. Um, so I certainly give this distribution a thumbs up. I think there's a huge amount of potential there. I think that as it currently stands, it's a pretty fantastic distribution, uh, and I'd have no problem using it as my daily driver. Nice up-to-date packages, nice selection of... Um, of, of software, even in from the Arch user repository, which means that you don't have to, like you might do in a, an Ubuntu-based distribution, add in third-party um, repositories and all that kind of stuff, which do decrease stability. So you've got at least you've got your software infrastructure all together with an Arch-based distribution like Antergos, and um, it's covered all of uh, everything that I needed it for. So that's absolutely fantastic. It's a fantastic distribution. I would like to see it make its way higher and higher up the rankings list um, as time goes on, but it is still a reasonably newish distribution. Um, so, um, so it will take time, but. Uh, all things look amazingly promising, and it is a distribution that I would recommend to maybe intermediate Linux users, users that might want to see what Arch is like without actually having to go through um, a command line install process. I have installed um, Arch before using the command line process, but I gotta say, um, a graphical installer makes it 10 times easier. So, um, 
I guess that's about my review. As a day-to-day -day driver, I absolutely found it fantastic. It's a very well-implemented GNOME desktop. It's a fantastically up-to-date and extensive package library. It is a fantastically helpful and vibrant community surrounding it. And whereas it certainly has its occasional faults here and there, those are faults that I have no doubt will be fixed over the course of time and look forward to seeing what Antergos is going to grow into. So if you are looking for a new Arch-based distribution to try out, well, um, Antergos is certainly a top contender. So that's about it for me today. Please let me know what you think of Antergos, those of you that have tried it down in the comment section below. Um, but also if you have any requests or ideas on what kind of Linux distribution you'd like me to use as a, da a daily driver in a future video where I talk about my sort of day-to-day -day usage of a, um, of a distribution, please again let me know in the comments section below. I won't necessarily sort of take them as requests because I'm sort of looking to do a variety of uh, Linux distributions and I'm going to focus around the more not necessarily user-friendly ones, but the more sort of um, ones that are not specific, ones that are not designed for specifically advanced Linux users, but really more of a, a general purpose um, Linux distribution. So thanks very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.